You just clicked on the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast in the universe. Guess what? You just won. This is Mind Pump. In today's episode, we answer four fitness and health questions, one of them live from one of our listeners. But the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion. Uh, this is where we talk about current events. We talk about our sponsors. We make fun of Justin. All the time. Uh, that part of this episode is 48 minutes long. Then we got into the questions. Let me give you a rundown. So we open up by talking about the monolith that showed up again somewhere else. I think Romania. Wow. Um, and then Bigfoot statue got stolen in Justin's hometown and he never brought it up on the podcast. <sighs> Man, really blew that one. <laughs> is he the guy who stole it? Yeah, I don't know. It could be. Then we talk about the stress of parenting and how our parents beat us with shoes. Uh, we talk about how HBO Max uh, is going to be showing uh, blockbuster films that are going to be released on there instead of in the theaters because, you know, theaters are closed probably forever. Mm. Then we talk about smoking marijuana indoors. Uh, <laughs> Justin did that. I have a story. Almost got a troll for that. Adam talks about getting razor blades and toiletries from Public Goods. By the way, Public Goods is a company we work with. You can get all kinds of products there. Very inexpensive. Very eco-friendly. But we got the craziest thing going for you right now, okay? If you sign up under our coupon code, you get $15 off your first order. It's like free money, you guys. But here's the kicker. Uh, there's no minimum order. So you can go on there, buy $15 worth of stuff, get it for free. Here's what you do. Go to publicgoods.com forward slash mind pump and then use the code mind pump and then get hooked up. Uh, then we talk about giving... Ned hemp oil to Justin's dog. His dog is a little anxious, freaks out a little bit. He yeah. squirts some of the uh, Ned hemp oil into his dog food. Yeah. In his uh, mouth, okay. And it, <laughs> and it calms him down a little bit. By the way, uh, Ned is a company we work with, and of course we have a discount for you. They're the best full-spectrum hemp oil you can buy. There's a lot of fake garbage out there. If you're going to use hemp oil, go with the real stuff. Go to helloned.com, H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump for 15% off. You can also use something called Brain FM to calm yourself down or increase your focus. You also talked about that in the episode. Go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. Get 20% off all their stuff. Then we got into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know how we feel about at-home workouts with only dumbbells. Um, by the way... Most of our MAPS workout programs have a dumbbell-only option. I know a lot of you can't work out in gyms right now. So if you got a program like MAPS Anabolic or MAPS Aesthetic or MAPS Performance, there is a dumbbell-only version. You can find those at mapsfitnessproducts.com. The next question, this person wants to know, look, if you're not chasing soreness, how do I know if I'm tearing my muscles down enough? The third question, this person wants tips. They're a female ectomorph. In other words, they're a hard gainer, so they're a skinny female. They want to pack on some curves and some muscle and some strength, so they wanted some tips. The fourth question was live from one of our listeners. Oh, Jill yeah. Miller called in from Michigan, wanted to know how to activate her shoulders and side laterals without overworking her traps. She's this, got some powerful traps. Yeah, Justin loves a girl with yeah, good traps. Yeah, my favorite. That's right. Um, also, look, uh, we design workout programs. Remember, for 20 years, we were personal trainers. We didn't have a podcast. We weren't media personalities. We worked with people one-on-one. -on -one. We were, became experts at designing very effective workouts for different people. Here's the thing. Just working out will give you some results. But if you work out right, it's a totally different ball game. Okay, Most programs sold online are crap. They're promoted by Instagram celebrities, these fitness people that really don't know how to train other people. They probably just know how to train themselves or just starve themselves. Who knows? But our programs are designed by real personal trainers. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Look at the different programs. Find the best one that works for you. Sign up for it. You have 30 days. Try it out. If it doesn't blow your mind, you get a full refund. Again, that's at mapsfitnessproducts.com. And it's t-shirt time. Oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Oh, my gosh. Yes, indeed. We have six winners, three for Apple Podcasts, three for Facebook. The Apple Podcast winners are SJ Jordan 27 Melanie2610, AB San Diego. And for Facebook, we have Christina Van Cleve, Marissa Lane Jones and Kelsey Lunsford. 
all of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. We got you, Kelsey. Wasn't there like an old like rumor that one of like the Metallica amble? Uh, am- hold on, hold on. Or the- Hit play, Doug. Let's record this. Well, we need Justin. Justin. No, we Jesus don't, Christ. Doug. You can all. You do not need all three of us on the mic to start I the recording. Know, but then Justin chimes in. And it so that's what? okay. It's hey, I chime it's okay. in. It's weird. real. It's okay. Okay, it's, it's real. Wasn't there a a Metallica or a Madonna album that was was known? You could play it backwards and like some demonic shit would. Like- a lot of albums had stuff Metallica? like that. I, yeah, I haven't heard that. I, I, I thought don't... it was Metallica or Madonna. I I've actually heard the Beatles. <laughs> that's yeah, a the big, Beatles. Yeah. That's a big range there, by the way. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not saying a bunch yeah, of albums between. Those are the two right. albums. Yeah. I th- uh, it was a Madonna album and a Metallica album, I thought. Or that, w- one dude, of the other. so back, so that's, the M. that yeah. all started uh, during the era of records, right? Mm-hmm. Because then kids would have the records at home yeah. and then they'd put their finger on it and then they'd make it go backwards. Yeah. 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 Worship's so the devil. Yeah. Worship's <laughs> the devil. Oh my yeah. God. Well, is it true or no? I mean, is it, is it like. I think you can hear whatever you want to hear is yeah. that what you think uh, yeah i think it's, it's like the purple dress thing that you, you do now you see remember you seen that thing going viral right what? back mm-hmm. what what's that that's been you, you know the there's like a a picture of like a, a dress and it's like a certain color and there's a 50 of the people will see one color 50 uh, will see another color you ever yeah, seen that yeah that was a dress okay yeah i remember something like that like floating around uh, yeah. All the social Sal, you medias. look all confused. You don't remember uh, seeing that the the dress that looked different from one person to the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Oh, okay, yeah, well, you yeah. acted like you. Speaking of weird stuff, yeah, are you but guys... it wasn't important. Adam. Are you guys? <laughs> no, no, no. Are yeah. you guys familiar? Okay, of course you are. You, you guys know the cartoon. Uh, uh, what's it called? With Elsa and yeah, uh, Frozen. 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 I was, was going to say <laughs> Snowden. Wow, you knew that really quick, there, guy. I well, have a daughter. He's got a daughter. <laughs> yeah. He also has a a, a, a life a life size doll of Elsa. Yeah, I was going to say he also has a Disney fetish. That's a, yeah. <laughs> forget that he has a daughter. Don't He's call me out. Let yeah. it go. So yeah. anyway, this mom bought an, El- bought an Elsa doll for her daughter, and uh, it was broken. And this is the sounds. Let me see if I can get it to play here. Uh, these are the sounds that the Elsa doll uh, was making. Oh, okay. I can't Ready? wait. Is this yeah. real? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, wow. dude. Wow. The mom was mortified. I think that's a different kind of doll. Yeah, so let, is it- Let it snow. Is oh, it- my Okay, face what is it supposed to say? <laughs> and is it just caught in a loop? It's not going all the way through? I have no sound? idea what it's supposed to say. All I know is- that she The got article didn't say that? It's probably, or did you just read the caption? It's probably and let along. it snow, or you know, mm. you know, whatever. It's definitely not that. I think it's let it go. <laughs> it's time for bed. Oh, let it go. <laughs> it's not yeah. let it snow. Yeah. <laughs> let it go is even better. <laughs> let yeah. it go. Let it go. Release. Everybody, let it go. Hey, dude. Uh, you know the monolith that we talked about? Yeah. That aliens put. Is in there Utah? another one? Right. Obviously, aliens put it there. Right. Yeah. There's no other explanation. Yeah. For that. Oh, obviously. Yeah. Um, they found it in somewhere else. A no, monolith totally a movie thing. Well, I feel like somebody else sent me something. I think it was like Tescadero or something where they actually like repeatedly put up a monolith just like that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm surprised you didn't know this. I'm actually a little disappointed. <laughs> wow. Okay, okay. I'm going to bring something up. All it's right. disappointing. Well, now you're just like, atta- <laughs> you're attacking me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you live in Santa Cruz. I do. Okay. You know. The- Shut up. It's not there. Hold on a second. You know that. <laughs> He got excited. Okay. Aliens are in Santa Cruz. <laughs> you know Felton. Yeah. You have the whole area. I, I live there. Yes. Why didn't you tell us that there was a, a Bigfoot statue that was stolen and then they found it in the Santa Cruz Mountains? It was a big deal over there. Oh, yeah. Well, I knew it was stolen. Didn't I bring that up? Uh, did you? I, I feel like I might have... Uh, well, maybe I forgot. I know. don't remember that. Although I do too. I now brought when up, you guys talk about weird shit like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I did bring up that it's there and it's like a monument, you know, for Felton it especially. Got stolen and then they found it again in the Santa Cruz. I didn't Mountains. hear that they they found it because yes. I knew it was gone. Yeah, because our conversation the other day about Bigfoot got me excited. Yeah. And uh, I looked up Bigfoot again. Where, th- where where was it? Like it, it was just in the forest somewhere. Like, uh, I'm gonna. I think it was on the side of the freeway. How long ago was this? Uh, let me see. I'm gonna find Jeez, it. Right. Like what? years ago. Like how dare that person? Yeah. yeah. Oh God, I lost the link. I oh don't know. God. It was somewhere. Right there. No. What was it? Was it a long time ago or was this recent? No, right it was now. recent. Oh, this is recent. Yeah, yeah. And you it. didn't know. I mean, I did know. I just wow. didn't bring it up. I guess yeah. Disapp- so. we've been disappointed in you a lot lately. God, you guys, I mean, I Star- so. it started with the Star Wars thing. Now listen, this. So, listen. did you know that they had Bigfoot sightings in Florida, but they don't call it Bigfoot there? No. Skunk ape. A skunk ape. Skunk I ape. That. Ape is the name in Florida. 
Just because it's stinky? Uh, apparently, it smells really bad. But that's what a lot of that's them say. That's a sign of a Bigfoot, a yeah. squatch. Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah, they got stinky squatch. I'm telling you, dude, the sightings are everywhere, Adam. One day <laughs> we're going to find one, and you're going to feel like an asshole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, every like story I've heard about like people that have seen Sasquatches, it's always like, I smell this like putrid smell. And, yes. then, and then this weird guttural growl like in the distance. Like, Wait rah, a second. Rah. You guys hang out with people that claim that they've seen I Bigfoot? I know no. two people like legitimately that have like Sasquatch. Really? Shut your face. I'm not even joking. So, by the way, those are all- This says a lot about your circle of friends. I, they're not my friends. They're my brother's <laughs> hey, friends. Hey, by the way, those are also symptoms of a stroke. I had this- I started smelling weird things. <laughs> <laughs> it was really we weird. We should get them checked out. I'll, I'll pass it along. So, the skunk na- ape, also known, <laughs> also known as the swamp cabbage man- sw- <laughs> Swamp ape. This all sounds like Fromundas. It's sti- you know? yeah, stink ape, Florida Bigfoot, Louisiana Bigfoot, Mayaka ape, so- swamp squatch, and Mayaka skunk ape is a humanoid wow. creature said to inhabit some southeastern U.S. states. What about the chupacabra? Chupacabra is totally different. I know. Yeah, chupacabra is a- But it's mythical. Isn't that like a Mexican monster? Yeah, it was like- Adam should know about that. I know yeah, come nothing on, about that. You never, <laughs> I'm not enough Mexican, I guess. Come you know, on, you got to know the folklore. Did you Did you ever get a chancla thrown at you? No. Wow, you're not. What is that? A chancla? Yeah. That's a slipper. Slipper. Oh, no. You yeah, never no. had a slipper thrown at you? No, chancla. no. Wait no. a minute. I thought you grew up in an abusive household. I, I did. <laughs> Are you making it? My, 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 mom, my mom used things much heavier than slippers. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. <laughs> sli- sli- she would say slippers are for pussies. Yeah, she threw uh, stilettos she, at you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the frying oh, pans, right bro. Yeah. Yeah. I remember one time my, my, my mom's going to hate this. She doesn't listen anymore. It's all right. So yeah. uh, my, my brother was a terror when he was a kid, like just a bad kid. And mm-hmm. we were at the grocery store and he was going nuts and he decided to run down the aisles and stick his arm into like the cereal boxes and just knock <laughs> them out. Up. Yeah. Oh, so he's running. Such an how old? How old? Move. How old? Do you remember? Uh, let's see. He was probably five or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And so that would be hilarious to see. Right. So okay, you got to con- remember. My mom had four kids, and she used to do. And this is funny. I have these conversations with Jessica, although I'm careful because I don't want to make her feel bad because Jessica has a newborn and it's very challenging. And then sometimes I'll be like, man, I don't know how my mom did it with four kids. And then I realize yeah. it makes her feel bad, right? But <laughs> I, it really is crazy. I, I don't know how, I don't know how she did it. Yeah. Four kids, right? She used to take all of us grocery shopping, all of us, the baby. Which is a nightmare. Go with one kid. One grocery. kid grocery. I don't know what it is about grocery shop. I think it's just because they get so excited because they see all the colors and they just want all the shit. You know, they do it on purpose. They advertise. That you ever go walk around the grocery store at the child's level and just look at all the shit that's put in front of them? Yeah, they do yeah. it on purpose. Right. Yeah. But anyway, she had a baby, which was my youngest sister, my brother, the terror, mm-hmm. my old, this, my the, my other sister, and then me, the responsible one. Well, anyway, my brother's <laughs> running around knocking shit off, and she just. I think she just had it, you yeah, know? And there's yeah. a few of these moments where she just lost her shit. Yeah. And she took her shoe off and whoosh, across in the, in the grocery store. Wow. As he's running, hit him in the leg. Ah. This is a cut. Kind of, yeah, my mom definitely lost her shit a few times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it, it, for us, it was like, you know, get over here. Like, and then we would run away, you know, and do shit like that. And then so she got so frustrated one time that she just grabbed, you know, my brother by the arm and myself and then like dug her nails in. It's like, ah, you're staying here. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Oh, you're hurting me. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Dude, you remember when you see, just, I remember as a kid, there were just a couple times where I remember thinking, why are you like, I was like, you know, obviously I didn't understand the stress of being a parent. So I'd be like, why are you like losing your mind? I just actually said that to my mom once because yeah. she got so mad at everybody and she's, ah. And well, I'm how like, old is your mom at this point too? Because our parents were much younger when they had yeah. it, right? Yeah. My mom had me when she was 20. Yeah, see, that's crazy. That to me, that's the most crazy part. Is that you know, imagine being uh, in your mid twenties and managing mm-hmm. four kids. Oh, you know, that yeah. just you're you're barely you're you not can't even, even manage yourself. Yeah, you're yeah. barely figuring your own shit out by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Much less trying to figure it out for four other people. Well, at least, at least you have a lot of energy, though. Uh, imagine having four kids now. Your old yeah, ass. Yeah, see, I disagree with that argument, right? Because that's yeah. an argument that people always try to make about, oh, you know, if you wait too, because people would say that to me, right? As I was getting older and not yeah. having kids, like, you know, aren't you worried you're going to be able to play basketball? This and that. Listen, that, I won, I will, because I'll stay healthy and fit. So I'll still be able to play basketball with Max when he's playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the. The wisdom, how calm you are at this age versus what you were at 25. Yeah. The stuff that frustrates, it frustrated me at 25, I give two shits about at this age. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. So that, that to me is way more powerful. That's true. And w- with kids and when ki- having kids is all about patience. Yeah. Patience with your partner, patience with the children or child. 
So to me, that's where age really benefits the you. And to me, that's more valuable than, yeah. oh, you know, I'm going to be 55 years old when my son's wanting to play basketball. Well, that's okay. It puts a little pressure on me to stay healthy and fit, but I like that pressure. I'd rather have that pressure than the pressure of, oh, I'm 25 and I've got to completely rearrange my 25-year-old life that I was going to Vegas and doing shit, now, and I'm so selfish, and now I have this child, and now I fucking deprive him. And then you're, they, gonna be, you're gonna be putting on the knee sleeves, yeah. elbow <laughs> sleeves, <laughs> the rubbing, rubbing the Bengay all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get ready to play the ball. I know. Uh, yeah, I you know. gotta do all that. I don't now. know, though. See, I like that, though. Don't you, I, do, don't you guys, as parents who have kids that are still coming up, right, don't you like... I like the pressure of... I want to stay healthy and fit because I've got a young kid. I'd rather that. Oh yeah, just to keep up. And like I, I told them, I'm like, you're not going to catch me, you know, strength wise. Like I just keep throwing that at them to kind of challenge them. Dude, yeah, I'll always be stronger. Than you. I'll be 70. I'll be 80. I'm stronger than you. You're gonna get your ass kicked one day. Of course I'm going to. Yeah, you know? it's like it's gonna be a long bring time. Bring it though. Yeah, but it'll yeah. be a long time. I remember the. First, They'll feel bad. I remember the first time I beat my dad at anything physical, and it was a actually it was depressing. We were we were grappling or whatever, and I got him an ankle lock, and I tapped yeah. him out for the first time. I think I was eighteen or nineteen, and it was really weird afterwards because <laughs> my it hero changes the dynamic. Dude. I, I just beat the my hero, you know, I and know. I, I remember walking away being like, "Oh man, yeah, you know, just yeah. crushed him." Old oh, young yeah. lion beats old lion. Now, how did Dad handle this it? Happened. Was he, he was he was fine. He was proud. Here's the thing about my dad. Uh, you know, he just turned it up a couple notches the next time we went. And, <laughs> yeah, he's he's pretty. <laughs> He's so, pretty okay. You got me that time. Yeah. I don't remember when I had that. I, you know, I, I, I think I was still small enough that my dad could handle me while I lived at home. So I was, I was out by seventeen, and I was still small enough that he could get me. Like at yeah, seventeen, yeah. I was six foot, about one hundred and thirty-five, one fifty. Like, just yeah, like he was. You had just, to run around in the shower to get wet. Yeah, uh -huh. he was. He was. <laughs> 200 he was shorter than me but 200 pounds and strong and he's a man yeah he's strong i mean yeah. he was a, a contractor his whole life so he got that forearm strength he could he could wrap me up and hold me and i couldn't do anything yeah, yeah, so yeah. it wasn't until i was in my 20s yeah, before my dad just relied on his size you know always and so that was like sort of like his gift but also his achilles heel because he never really like trained to to, to maintain the strength and I, that was all i did are you sure your dad can't whoop you still no way. Really? No way. I don't know, sure? bro. I'm going to call him. He's pretty big, Call dude. him, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, wait, don't call him. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll set up the mats, dude. We'll, we'll I do don't this. Know. I know. I feel like if we were talking to him, he might say a little different story yeah. right now. Yeah. So my, so I'll put him in a headlock. My dad had just got a bunch of uh, uh, cement uh, mail sent to his house, right? He's doing some, some work, and there was some kid delivering it, some 20-year-old kid. And these are like 75-pound bags of cement. And remember, my dad's arthritic. He's older now. But still, dude, still freaks, trips me out. So, and my mom's taking a video of this because she sent it to me. She's like, look at your dad. So she, he sees this kid loading up these bags and carrying them in the so backyard. So he's going to like double up or something, right? So, so, so my dad goes out there. Yeah. So my dad goes out and just stacks. Oh, that's it. cute. He's stacking. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah. stacking four, you know, walking through. And the kid stops my dad and goes, how are you doing this? My dad's like, well, you know, yeah. I work as a kid. They lift yeah. the, the cement. Yeah. I'm actually a hard worker. Yeah. Subtle, fle yeah. subtle flex. <laughs> totally, dude. <laughs> you, my, that's my dad. He doesn't grow up with that Bro, shit. Bro, that's not just your dad. That's going to be you, dude. Yeah. I'm the same we, 100% you're going to be that guy. Dude, he did I tell you guys when he got a ticket with my brother? Did I tell you guys about this? Mm -mm. They my, they were driving to Sacramento, and my brother was, I want to say he was 18 or 19, and at the time, he had a Supra, and it was like fast, right? Souped yeah. up or Your whatever. You brother had a Supra? He did. Really? It wasn't the very fast Supra, so let's, not the like the crazy one. He had the They're slower one. They're still expensive, one. though, aren't they? The collector ones are. Can you get, can you get Supras cheap? Uh, I thought that was an eighty thousand plus car, no matter what. You're talking okay, so he got the before. I only drove American. Yeah, he so. got the yeah. <laughs> stupid dude. Just had to throw that in there. <laughs> Chevy Silverado, <laughs> like a rock. Yeah. So anyway, my brother had a car, souped it up, thought it was fast. Okay. My my dad is driving his car. He has the what did my dad have? Accurate something, right? But it's relatively quick or whatever. So they're driving to Sacramento. My brother at this point had already gotten two speeding tickets mm -hmm. and he was living with my parents and my mom had a conversation with him. And she's like, if you get another speeding ticket, like we're going to have a big problem. This is very dangerous. My dad sitting down with him, you know, supporting my mom. Like, yeah, you shouldn't be speeding. Anyway, yeah. on the way back from Sacramento, my dad and him start racing and they are, I mean, <laughs> your dad's racing your brother. I, my dad is racing his son on the freeway. Hilarious. Okay. Dude. So they're 120, 130. They're flying or whatever. <laughs> anyway, 
my brother gets pulled over by a police officer. So my dad sees him in the rear mirror. He gets off on the exit, come back around to kind of see what's going on, pulls back up, and the cop's like, oh, cool, I was going to let you go, but I saw you just... I saw you racing this kid, so you're going to get a ticket too. So my dad had to go home and explain no. to He had to explain to my mom that he got a ticket racing my brother, that they both got tickets. <laughs> oh, my God. That's epic. That was a cold day. Hilarious. <laughs> that dude. night was very oh, yeah. That night was very interesting. <laughs> Slept on the couch that yeah. night. Huh? Anyway, dude, uh, I, I read another interesting article. So there was this woman who bought a house in the UK. It, for whatever reason, it went viral. It's kind of creepy. So let me paint the story, right? She buys this house with her husband, all excited, fix her upper. They go downstairs into the basement and into the wall. I'll pull up the picture for you so you can kind of see what it looks like. In the wall is a baby face. What? Sticking out of the wall. Oh, that's creepy. Like a doll. No. Yeah. Posted a picture of posted a picture on it, and everybody's like, You need to move out of the house. It's cursed. What would you guys do? <laughs> If you saw that, so in okay, I'll scrape that where, off. Where I can't tell from here that picture is it like it's in the wall of the basement? Yeah, I'd probably take a sledgehammer and smash it out. I mean, it's just a baby face. It's a it's a it's a brilliant yeah. prank that somebody else yeah. did, right? I mean, I would, totally. I would that's something you would probably consider doing yourself, right? I would do some weird yeah. shit like that just oh. to mess with people. Yeah, so they they moved out. Did yeah. they really? They actually did. That was enough to move them out. They did. Wow, they were, they were scared. Wow, really? I know. Did you guys see um, HBO Max, dude? Dropping gonna drop in twenty twenty one. They are going to release uh, blockbuster movies the same day that they put them out in theater. I saw that. Yeah. So that we are in the big trend now. There's now. I, I thought I heard you talking about an article saying that. Oh, it's not going to be the. It's just temporary. Yeah, they're saying like this was some kind of hysterical like pivot, you know, that they're doing just to try and like get as much money as they can. Which the thing is, I mean, it is a bit of a hedging, right? Because uh, the you know they're doing this to obviously try and like recoup as much money as they can, but that's smart, you know. It's Why brilliant. wouldn't they do that? Like, who knows what what the f- the future holds for theaters? You it's know, brilliant, and I think that model is going to completely change. I, I do. think that I do too. It, there still will be a, a people that want to go to the theater. It's just okay. not as much. Just not as much. Yep. It'll be yeah. like a you know semi annual by you know biannual type of thing that you do because it's not. Isn't I, that sad? You're, I mean, you realize that as you get older, like certain things you just loved growing up, like become just like nostalgic and like you know like nobody does it anymore like even just going to like blockbuster video and like looking at things like yeah it's it, just you it's, miss that stuff the experience is changing yeah. uh you know we didn't have we back then we didn't have 90 inch tvs that could go in your house and yep. amazing yep. surround sound and clarity i mean the experience you can create at, create at home is like crazy i mean i don't you i mean television when we were kids was you know, fuzzy and on a boob tube and at the biggest size, 36 inches. That was yeah. a big TV. When yeah, we were yeah. kids, 36 inches was a big TV. Watching so, that scrambled skin of Yeah, so yeah. going to this, <laughs> Of course, you thought of that, right? That's away. a nipple. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> going, going to the movie theater was it, it, uh, just crazy. I mean, it was clear. It was bigger. The sound was amazing. Like, it was it was a no-brainer where now yeah, it's... Yeah, I see. I love going to movies. I like the whole experience of going yeah, to movies. Yeah, me too. I love it. I love sitting in the seat and getting the popcorn and doing the I fucking thing. hate hearing you chew your popcorn. What? <laughs> I fucking hate hearing you chew your popcorn. Me? Yeah, you, you pick you. up on that. Me yes. personally? Oh, no, oh yeah. yeah, I tune that out. Yes, well, I mean you and people like you. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you chew loud, and have and you heard the- yourself breathe ever? <laughs> That's not anymore, bro. That's an old mind. You know, Doug has to edit out your breathing on the no, podcast. No, that's old, dude. That's back on <laughs> steroid days when I'm like 2.30 and jacked, dude. I'm normal now. I breathe normal. <laughs> Doug, have you had to cut my oh, breathing my out? my favorite time of the week. Not lately. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Get out of here. A little salad hey. here. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah. Stop. I did that this case. So uh, I like a theater that's like less than 30% full. And people not ch- and you have space in between, and I can watch it because I do not like being right next to somebody else and hearing yeah. the whole theater ch- I, chomping. Or some insanely tall guy with his fat head, you know, yeah. right in the way. <laughs> or some, <laughs> or that. some kid kicking the back of your seat the whole time. Nah, yeah. bro. Well, I, well, anyway, that when I was saying, when I I, maybe it's because we grew up with theaters in the sense, I, like I like the experience probably because we grew up with it. I don't think, and my kids like it too because I always took them. But I bet you, like the really young kids coming up now, and uh, they're probably not going to have the same attachment. No, yeah. And I can see theaters like, 
like I, I like going to theaters recent. Well, not recently, but before uh, COVID, uh, the theaters that serve food and, and drinks. Yeah, that was kind of fun. That was great. I, yeah. I, yeah, and you could you could have booze and whatnot. Like I was like, this is awesome. It's like a totally different experience. But yeah, that's the thing, dude. It's this group dynamic. So there's something about like when other people are watching the same thing and get reactions and you kind of feed off of it a bit. That's why I liked it so much. Yes. It's like, yeah, it's a di- totally different vibe and feeling than no, you're just right. watching it by yourself. If you watch like a, a scary movie or a comedy where like the crowd yes. you know, it amplifies you. it, like yeah. it makes it scarier or it makes it funnier because you got people that are laughing the or most, freaked out. The like, most totally. fun I would I have is going to movies uh, that have like a following. And then you know everybody in the theater also is a fan so for yeah. example a new star wars comes out yes. and let's say you're a big star wars fan now right. you're around other people that well that was my experience like so and i told you guys when the when the first one the when the like episode nine or whatever come, came out and i went and i was in line and i was there like opening night uh and everybody's in costume and like like super like all in nerd mm-hmm. you know city I fucking loved it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's just like everybody's there clapping at stupid parts that nobody else normally would, but they just know that they just brought, you know, a certain character back just, you know, to kind of showcase them. And do you know? Like, ah, just as like, I fit in. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my people. Do you I'm know like, oh, that no, I'm Doug, Doug was all worried about because we talked about Star Wars for like 15 minutes in the episode the other day. And he's like, oh, I don't know how that's going to land. I feel like <laughs> that was a lot of Star Wars talk that I didn't understand. And I was like, no, I'm with you, Doug. I didn't get, I didn't get none of that shit either. Right. So then uh, I get, I got, DMs about yeah. the shit that Justin said. Right. And being like, I can't believe that Justin didn't drop this. And then they tell me, like, I give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have no idea what you're talking about either, bro. bro here's the funny part, right? Like, I, I look at myself as like, I've just been a lifetime fan, but like, I, you, it, it's so massive. Like, the, this universe thing they've created with Star Wars that like, it's gone way beyond even me being able to pay attention to everything. I was, I was like that. It's with almost the, depressing. I was bro. like that with The Matrix, and then I was disappointed with two and three. Uh-huh. I feel like the Matrix had an opportunity to do that. Like yeah, that first they came one, out with they tried. Bang. They did. Yeah. Aren't they doing something else though? Isn't there something Matrixy coming out uh, all, as part of this deal? I did hear, hear, oh, hear I didn't whims know that. of, of oh, that. Bro. Like uh, that they were going to do like a, some kind of a, a, a reboot or, or some kind of like a next version. It's, if you really are into that whole Matrix thing, there's something called the Animatrix, which is pretty cool. And they're these animated sh- films. It's like cut, the prequels. Really. Yes, showing what happened, what led to the Matrix. And they're really good. Did you guys see that we can smoke pot indoors now? What really? I, that's what, what? How did you do it before? <laughs> wow! Yeah, <laughs> no. San Fr- I love it when they say I could do something. I do. San anyway. Francisco yeah. just passed a law for that. Said that saying that uh, cigarette smoking indoors is illegal, but you can smoke. You can smoke marijuana indoors. So now, now. how does so does that mean that like marijuana bars or like you know hangouts would become a thing like more? Yeah. So they, they, so I, I mean I told you I don't know if I told you guys this or not, but when uh, we started the very first vape bar in the Bay Area um, back when it was like gr- gray area, like it wasn't necessarily. We could, mm-hmm. we could do it. It was back when you couldn't do it, you couldn't, and they weren't saying you uh, you you could or you couldn't, right? Mm-hmm. We did it. You combined it with massage and everything? Yeah, yeah I did. We did all kinds of crazy <laughs> shit. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it was like the Wild Wild West when I got in, bro. You could just get away with just about anything, and it was, uh, and we did really well. So, and since then, I believe they have these lounges, and I believe that the lounges, Justin, to your point, um, had to be vape lounges mm. back then. So they were only vape. You couldn't smoke indoors because of the laws about smoking indoors. So stupid. But yeah. now that that's passed, I think you're right. That's probably what will be affected the most. And to Sal's point, duh, of course, everybody probably smokes in their home, doesn't yeah. give a shit. But there's nobody left in San Francisco. So. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it like a ghost town right now in LA and San Francisco, New York? Is that what it looks They're like? They're losing a lot of it's people. It's the apocalypse. Do you know what, you know what I saw in article? New York's crime, by the way, through the roof right you, now. Here's it's another true. random. Uh, I read an article. I assumed that uh, with COVID, ever, all the restrictions, everyone being in home, everyone working from home. Um, that you, we would see a, a huge, dramatic drop in uh, car accident deaths. Do you know that's not true? No. That's not true. No, probably yeah. because people there are There has been a rise. Do you know why? No public transportation? Well, partially that is one. Okay. Uh, the other one is the roads are more open and people are speeding. And uh, since more fatal accidents are related to speed than they are mm-hmm. congestion, mm-hmm. so it's actually caused the the, the uh, fatal accidents to increase in many cities. Here, by the way, how random is that? I do see that. Here's how you know, this is always an example I use when people are like, but the government just wants to you know protect you and help you. If they really did passing a law, what idiot says that? Uh, you know, well, people. 
it, passing a law that would restrict car manufacturers from producing cars that go faster than 65 miles an hour would be, is a very law. Not that I'm endorsing that, by the way. I would never endorse that. But that's a very logical thing that would save way more laws than most of the laws lives, that they pass. Lives, you mean. Uh, excuse me, lives. Yeah. It would save a lot of lives by just making cars all speed limited at 65 miles an hour. Where can you go for, or 75, whatever the max speed is on uh, yeah. freeways in That's the- so in the, boring. Yeah. Right? I you just know. thought that was really, that was really random. I would have never guessed that. I would have thought the opposite. You know, just obviously a higher amount of people driving, you would think that would increase the odds, but no, it's the opposite I because it's wide open. So more people are driving yeah. fast. So this law with marijuana is <laughs> for businesses having indoor marijuana smoking, not for private residents. I, I think it's both. I think that's that's what, That's stupid if it's private. Yeah. Well, the, well no, anyway. no, because I think hey, you guys can yeah, now but do if you, this. Uh, if you were, were at a hotel or Yeah, something. hotels or yeah. renting a room from somebody, think of it like that. Yeah. So you now, never smoked weed in a hotel before? Well, you know I've been doing oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Right. I think I, it was I the first time. I think that time that yeah, I was- Hey, don't it, you remember? I was at CES. You hung out with me first. Yes. Yeah. I hung out with you first. So I, we, when we flew out, when me and Taylor flew out to CES to do some filming and this stuff. Is and like get all this like latest technology. Like I'm trying to find out what's coming out for fitness and this and that. And uh, so we're, we're, we're kind of decompressing that night and, and trying to chill out and whatever. And I think he had a joint or something, you know, like- uh, the, Taylor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, you had just, I mean, we were at, we've been to hotels together all the time and you see me do this all the I've time. I've seen yeah. Adam do this all the time and he's like totally not, oh no, it's not even a big deal. Like, you know, like they say that, but they're, they're not going to like, you know, no, nobody's going to come and do anything about it, whatever. So they have like smoke alarms, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, man. There's smoke alarms in here. I don't want to do this, you know, inside. He's like, no, no, it's fine. I've seen Adam do it all the time. And so lights it up, and then he does it in the um, bathroom. And so we're like – we're actually getting pretty stoned. I mean, mm-hmm. I, it was it was at a point where it was like, okay, like, wow, that that was strong. And then we just vegging out and watching TV, and the smoke makes it up into the uh, smoke alarm, and boom, like it, it hits like, nyeh, nyeh, like red lights everywhere. <laughs> All of a sudden, we hear a voice coming through the speaker of the uh, the alarm, and they're like, "Stay in your room, stay in your room. <laughs> We're coming up there." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" And I'm, I'm like paranoid, yeah. you know, <laughs> like. I I just smoked. I was like, I'm dying. Like I'm scrambling. I'm like, oh my god, dude, we're going down. You know, they're gonna take us downtown. And so, like, I flush like, all the weed. Yeah, yeah. Flush like, get the- rid of it. Like we put it in the toilet. Like I, I'm like, I'm like, here's, here's what we're gonna do. So I turned, I turned the the shower on it, like as as hot to as I could it to, to fog it up with all the mist and all that the steam. So the steam like and so uh, all that and like we're coming in and then and then actually, which was really <laughs> random. Like all of a sudden, like it went down. And 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 we're we're talking back through the speaker like they could hear us. We're like, hey, you know, we're fine in here. It was just the steam from our hot shower. And then and then like I, I don't know if they heard us or not, but then they it just all went away. Which, and they didn't come up. I don't know anything about fire alarms. Stop, but I, I don't think but steam I'm, does I'm, that. I'm guessing that Steve would not set a fire alarm off. Which I'm is sure what makes I'm sure the off. excuse. I'm sure, be, I'm sure water doesn't set off a fire alarm. <laughs> yeah, that'd yeah. be the worst that's, fire alarm of all probably, time. That's probably true. But when I was really high it, and paranoid, it, that's what I came up with. Looks like smoke. Hey, it probably worked for the security guy at the hotel, though. He's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hot, real hot shower. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can see how that could happen. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Where were you guys? What, what I was town? In a panic. Uh, we were in <laughs> Vegas. Oh, nobody cares. Yeah, no, yeah, that's probably. What that's what I. Th- I mean, I, I've never been in trouble for that. Although I do kind of pay attention to the smoke alarm. Where oh, it's sorry, at. we were smoking weed in here. The guys, like, you guys want some coke too? No, we're cool. Yeah, that's Vegas. I don't yeah, want to yeah. go that hard today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's that's. <laughs> yeah, it was. Anyways, it was totally crazy. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> hey, I wanted to bring this up about we're supposed to talk about public goods, and I don't think we ever said this. Uh, so, public goods is one of our sponsors. Check out how crazy – I want to tell this to the audience because Doug explained this to me. I didn't believe it. I checked on it. It's legit. If you use the Mind Pump code and go to Public Goods, you get $15 off your first order, and there's no minimum purchase. So you literally could go there and get $15 of just free stuff. You could literally get the stuff that I use the most. So right now what I use from Public Goods the most is the toothpaste and the razor blades. The razor blades are a buck. What do you shave? You have a, a beard. Buck? Yeah, I still wow, – You still, don't think I clean this up? Guy? Oh wow! Where's your beard grow? Well, bro, you get, I get, I got, I, get, I <laughs> you can't, full, you can't pull the neck beard. Yeah, thing. I got, a, a, I got a full neck beard and, and cheekbone thing going. If you, I wanted to, you get cheek hair. Yeah, I get, right under my eyes, I could grow no hair. No way! Like, like, wow! Like, like right here like to a here. Chia pet. Yeah, dude. <laughs> no, yeah. You don't. Yeah, I'm like right here to Shut here. Up, I, yeah, bro. I, 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 <laughs> like, well, I mean, like Wolf Boy. I mean, yeah. I get like the you know like a random one that's like all long right here, you know, and then like. <laughs> 
<laughs> and get some of those sometimes. Yeah, it's come like, on, like right? Strays. You don't ever get those. You don't have to line your beard up. Uh, I do down here on the neck. Well, yeah, but it doesn't what, grow. Well, what up. Do I, you I don't, it doesn't grow up. What my do you face use to my eye? Huh? What do you use? Razors. Okay. He's yeah, like, yeah, Norelco. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like that thing in the Are you in a Norelco guy? You're not a Norelco guy, no, are you? dude. No. Yeah. I hate that. That never worked. That, that ruins my... Me, yeah, razor I've burn. always thought they were... T- it, some people, they work great. I think it really depends on your skin and the way your hair grows. The commercials for the shavers make it look like it's so great. Like, the guy's in traffic, and he's like, yeah, yeah. here we go. Just then they had that shaver. weird, like, like, like lotion that squirted out of it. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. It was like, ew. No, I bought into it when I was a kid, because remember the commercial had, like, the three heads on it that, like, pivoted? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the commercial was that it was like racing on skin. Yeah. I'm like, oh, look at that. It's so like can you do like a subscription with it, or you just keep like doing reorders of the? So I blades? just I just reorder. I'm I I don't mind. Why well, shouldn't say that? Katrina reorders for us, right? So yeah. I, she she watches the. She, what I, I have this thing, right? Okay, so it's funny you bring that up. Uh, my grandma used to do this for me when I when I moved in with her, and I loved it. Like. She always, I don't know if you guys do like this or not, but I am this way with toilet paper, with uh, soap, with toothpaste, toothbrushes, uh, deodorant, all bathroom stuff. Um, I'm so anal about not having it that I have like four backed up of oh, everything. You're, you're the wipe guy. Yeah, you're weird about yeah, that. Yeah, I, yeah, I have four backed up of everything. Oh my God. And, and I wait. And then when it gets down to like two, I'm already reordering. Oh, I, you know what? This I, I can't believe I never asked you this. So when COVID was happening, for whatever reason, there was a big toilet paper run. Oh yeah. You already buy a ton of toilet paper. I'm good, bro. Were you weird about you that? you like the king? I wasn't weird. I didn't even trip. I said, yeah. I already got I got this covered for like <laughs> yeah. a year. I've been preparing this for this my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly, I scoffed. How many? Ba- I, I got on Amazon. I was like, let's see if I could double up on this. Be thing. honest right now. Yeah. How many? How much toilet paper do you have right now? So um, I, it's not ridiculous right now, but um, you know, you guys. When we first started the podcast, I was still this was still a common thing for me because since I your was, sister's the same way. I found out because she's she is. telling me all about it. Well, it's, it's come from the it, same. We're, we're traumatized from the same thing. You guys would literally run out of toilet paper. At home? Yeah, and we'd have like you know McDonald's napkins for toilet paper on our our sink and shit like that. You know, oh, and you get down like the last one. You know, like that's the worst thing ever, right? Yeah. So yeah, that was real. That's real talk. Wow. That would that would happen. Uh, relatively often in our house and so Did i you think, ever have to use the roll to wipe with just tear off um, the pieces of i don't think i ever i mean what would it what would be the most frustrating is you go to the but he, okay when you're a kid and that's happened more than once like you're 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 you look for it yeah first. you look for it i mean I, which i do now oh, that's why that's never happened to me i've never been stuck on the toilet like oh my god there's no toilet paper because i've been trained to look for toilet paper there's a good chance there won't be any toilet paper yeah so make sure you come to the bathroom with napkins if you have to and so yeah i mean i i remember uh, stealing uh, napkins from school to bring home to make sure that I had toilet paper oh in there. Oh my gosh. Because it was a common thing that we would run out of because we mm. only had the, you know, my, my parents would go buy six rolls at a time for a family of fucking eight, you know, mm. and they, like, it would be out within a, a week and we'd be again doing napkins. So, yeah. yeah, both of us had that. And for the longest time, this is what I used to tell people to buy me for my birthdays and holidays. Like, don't give me gifts. I'm terrible at receiving things. Buy me toilet paper or, or, or bathroom supplies. I love that, and that was like this. <laughs> it was serious, serious. Like my sister, you, my sister used to make me this uh, like toilet paper cake for like my birthday. <laughs> it was awesome, and it was like a tradition to buy Adam toilet paper. And what I loved about it, and it's fallen off a little bit, is that I would get enough toilet paper in November. That's when my birthday is in December for Christmas that I wouldn't have to buy toilet paper the whole year. Wow. I'd have enough to get me through the entire. You are weird about toilet paper in terms of its quality too. Yeah, like you get so mad. Quadruple ply. Yeah, when it's not like. uh, I'm offended if someone has single single ply. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You're a major cheapskate to me if you do that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. See, for me, judgment. I never ran out of toilet paper, so I don't have the same uh, relationship with toilet paper that you do. Yeah, yeah. I look at it as. I'm literally wiping my ass with this. Yeah. Why would I spend most money? I'll get it done with sandpaper. You know? Oh my what, god! What, you don't give yeah, a shit. yeah, no. yeah. I mean, it's a, it's the same thing with air conditioning and heating in the house and all that stuff like that. The things that. You know, I, I know you like to run the heater and open the window. I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't make any I do sense to me. Yeah, well, it's kind of like, oh, I can. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's more like that than it's oh, under my control. It's not very logical, I understand. Oh, hey, by the way, uh, in term, for marijuana, I keep trying to bring this up but from some weird video plays. Uh, we talked about marijuana earlier. The House just passed a bill. We'll see if it passes the Senate. Uh, it's a decriminalization bill, federal for mar- marijuana. Oh, federal. Wow. Federal, and I believe That's it will news. go back. It'll be retro to anybody who got charged with marijuana crimes. Oh, so they'll start releasing people. They'll start releasing people, and it has a very good chance good. of passing the Senate. Mm-hmm. So we could very well be on the cusp 
of marijuana being federally decriminalized. Fully legal. No, not fully legal. No? Decriminalized. 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 Yeah, but, but on, a, on a federal level, that's a big deal. That's a big deal, bro. Because even, it's Schedule 1. Even when I was doing things in California and California protected us, there was always this fear of traveling with money or the so you know one of the biggest problem one of the biggest headaches that we had was no banks would take us mm. oh yeah so you you sure you could legally start up this cannabis club and you can technically grow x amount of plants okay we could got we got covered for all of that but then because the federal laws are still really strict on marijuana no banks want to fuck mm. with you yeah so then you're making all this money that you have to pay taxes on improve and try and build a legitimate business and then no bank will yeah. touch you you just gotta put it under your bed yeah Which, no yeah that doesn't work with not, either not no good. no yeah. no they're trying to make you a criminal no uh -huh. no so right here i'm reading it the house passed sweeping legislation that would decriminalize marijuana and expunge nonviolent marijuana related convictions so it's going to be going to the Republican led Senate. Um, I hope they pass it because this yeah. if the Republicans <clears throat> don't, this will damage how well that's the one thing, yeah, that they're they're sort of stonewall. Well how, how well are you on your or how versed are you on your like prohibition history? Like how that all played out, right? Oh, it, with marijuana? Yeah, no, oh, no, 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 with alcohol. alcohol. Oh, oh and like so because here's here's what's interesting to me, because you know, the because I know it wasn't like overnight, it went from illegal to legal. Like it did the same the thing. States started it did the same, it, it did states. They also you know, they started it is like prescription also, like mm. alcohol. Like you go to a doctor and they could prescribe it and get it very, very similar, right? Mm. So what I'm wondering is, is it going to be the same? Is it going to be a, a slow transition or is it going to be like one one day where not not everyone's doing it and then all of a sudden you see it in grocery stores all over the place? And the other question that I have is because of how high they tax on it, will there still be a black market going, which is happening right now? Yeah. And did that happen in alcohol? Was there, was there uh, okay, it's legal now and it's in grocery stores, but it was still black market early because of how it was maybe It depends taxed. on the state, right? So I know there's some states that uh, you're, it's illegal to buy alcohol on Sundays or yeah. it's illegal to buy it past a certain like time. Utah? Yeah, I believe so. And in those states- Even like Oregon shuts down at like midnight or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. in those states, there are black markets for alcohol around that. Mm -hmm. the, the the higher, look, like in New York, for example, the taxes on cigarettes are so high, it's quite common to buy uh, cigarettes on the street. Well, what was the, the, the most strict state in terms of marijuana? Because I- I feel like I remember that that Florida was like really strict on marijuana, but it's like everybody's pills. popping these painkiller pills. Yeah, they're the they're the uh, they're the California of pills, right? So that's what the, as far as how loose they are on the marijuana, how loose California is on marijuana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Florida is that way with pills. Mm -hmm. So the whole East Coast, you have all the East Coast states. Everybody drives down to Florida to get prescription stuff like Vicodin and oxycodone and stuff like that. Yeah, and then they sell it on the black market over there. The same way that people drive to California. California and pick up weed and then go sell yeah. it in other states. Like that's a common it's like practice. That and like Texas was really uh, strict. Yeah, right, no, with marijuana, it was. And this is going to be huge uh, yeah. if it gets decriminalized because uh, lots of states are already legalizing it. The federal government's already stopped going into these states <clears throat> to try to persecute. Mm -hmm. um, if it goes and becomes decriminalized, on top of it, um, more states will probably legalize and well, decriminalize. Yeah, that's good news. Uh, Adam, I was going to tell you like I took a page right out of uh, your book in terms of like with your dogs uh, because, dude. Arlo, like the saga of Arlo, right? I, I've told you like, you know, about the whole thing with him pooping on my foot and, you know, <laughs> we're not going to revisit that. But, uh, I mean, he's been so like anxious and neurotic lately. And I don't know if it's after the, re the introduction of, you know, bringing another dog in the mix. I don't know if it's like this competitive thing for attention or what, but he's just been uh, just constantly just, you know, walking around in circles, pacing. And I'm mm. just like, what is his deal? So I started giving him some some Ned and some CBD oil. Uh, and what do you do? Uh, just put it in his dog food drops or whatever. Um, so what we do is we'll, we'll, we'll kind of mix Rectally. it in with some treats. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pour it over some treats. You shit on my foot. Well, I actually <laughs> thought, yeah, you should, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll just right up there. Hey, yeah, yeah. you know, calm like, down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it works, I probably. Would and then later, yeah. later on, Courtney uses the dropper. Oh, this, oh my! <laughs> oh, oh yeah, this tastes, this tastes, <laughs> this tastes familiar. Uh, oh, anyway. Come on! Yeah, oh, <laughs> oh, she doesn't good. listen, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. She's not going to be a South Yeah, you'd be anymore. a... Yeah, I know. Yeah. Careful, <laughs> Sorry, she cooks yeah. dinner for there you goes. every once in a while. <laughs> Sorry. That's right. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up then. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> but it's working, man. Like, like he he's just a little bit... just a, It takes the edge off just a bit 
to where he'll go lay down and he's not so like, you know, right. He literally will, will pace around right in front of me as I'm watching TV. And I'm like, I run him and I'm getting him exercise. And I'm like, do I need to do more? Like he's just freaking out all the time. So, but it makes a difference. Thank God it's been, it's been working a bit, but it's like, you know, it's one of those things like I, I got to figure this out. Cause uh, I mean, this is a great, a great way to kind of like every now and then calm him down, but it's not something I I'm telling do. you the, uh, hello works. The, the Ned yeah. and brain FM combo is the money combo. Yeah. Mm. Even the dogs, the, the, the brain FM with the white noise because half that's half of what makes them all anxious. They hear things outside and stuff like that. So yeah. playing the brain FM, wherever you have them, I don't know where you keep your dogs most of the time, but playing brain FM in the background and some CBD. Do you guys remember that? Well, I got a combo. With chill. Ass do you guys dog. remember that anti-marijuana commercial when we were kids where the, the girl, she's like about to smoke weed and the dog's talking to her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. In you. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, you used to be so cool. You used to be so cool. Yeah. I'm, I, when I was watching, I was like, fuck. Like, wow. I want to smoke a joint, talk Man, to my dog. You could talk to dogs. <laughs> this is great. First question is from Jess X207. How do you feel about at home workouts with only dumbbells? Do you think you can get the same results as a gym? You can get excellent results at home uh, with just dumbbells, like phenomenal results. The only kind of people that I think might suffer from just using dumbbells are people who are really advanced. Uh, who are lifting really, really heavy with barbell exercises. And because they aren't doing the barbell exercises, they may lose some strength, not necessarily because they lose muscle, but rather because they're not practicing the skill of a specific exercise. Mm -hmm. But honestly, if it, you know, uh, as a trainer, I used to tell my clients this all the time, if you have a pair of dumbbells and an adjustable bench, I could give you a phenomenal, that's all I needed. That's all I ever needed mm -hmm. to train clients, uh, to train most people. So you can get phenomenal results doing that. In fact, all of our programs have an at-home version now. So like, let's say you do MAPS Anabolic or MAPS Aesthetic, for example. Um, you go in there, there's a dumbbell-only version. So you can follow the whole program at home with just dumbbells. The only person that suffers is a, a power lifter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if somebody's very specific that needs to be good at barbell lifts in order to excel in their sport, right. that's the only person. You can build an incredible physique with just dumbbells. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I would say... 80 plus percent of the clients I trained, I because in a gym when it's prime time hours, it's hard to get a bench. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one squat rack. It's hard to get a so a lot of the training was dumbbell. Most of the training I think I taught was dumbbell training. You could build an incredible physique without ever ever touching a barbell. Now we are obviously we talk about the benefits of a barbell and we love barbell training, but it doesn't mean that I mean, consistency and diet is is trumps the shit out of the tools that you're using. If you have well, good programming, that makes the biggest difference in the world. And so mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, I mean, you could get crappy results with just dumbbells too, but it's not because of the dumbbells. It's yeah, because of the programming stuff. And I think too, I mean, definitely power lifters, you know, have a different goal in mind, but also they could benefit a lot from uh, dumbbell training. Sure. And to, you know, like uh, fit that in uh, and, and cycle out of what they're normally doing to get into more like unilateral type training and to have that that independent load where now, uh, you know, your, your body has to be able to stabilize and react in a different way, provides a new stimulus. So uh, really like dumbbells should be a part of your routine at some point, even if uh, you're trying to be a Goliath in the gym with, with barbells. Yeah, I can't think of a better, honestly, if you only could get the bare minimum for equipment for your house, a pair of dumbbells would be honestly the best option. I mean, you could do a lot with suspension trainers and bands too, but dumbbells are so versatile. They're free weight. They adjust to your body. You can build muscle with them. You can condition um, you can do quite a bit with dumbbells. They work you unilaterally, so it's really good for balancing out your body. If you want to develop aesthetics, uh, dumbbells are more than sufficient. So you're going to do great with just dumbbells. Next question is from MJ Langevin. If we're not necessarily chasing soreness in our program in order to train more frequently, how do we know if we're tearing the muscles enough to ensure growth? I, I like this question mm. because... Um, I think that I was uh, guilty of perpetuating this, right? Telling people that we we, we tear and break down in the yeah. gym, and then it's when you go home, you rest, repair, and 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 grow. Because there's a little bit of truth to that, but it's it's not as important as you think. We can you can never get sore, and you can consistently build muscle and burn body fat. That's I right. mean, you can you you can never ever get sore and feel. I mean, in fact, uh, the most ultimate. I've actually thought about doing this too, of like you know, being so consistent for like six months to a year where I like just, I 
barely progressively overload consistently. Mm -hmm. You see this like with people who get really good at like push ups. Like they start with 10 push ups and then they add to 11, then they add to 12. I mean, you can progressively overload just a tiny bit to where you don't even really get sore, but the body adapts and gets stronger because you're overloading. And honestly, that's your best indicator that you're you're doing well in your programming. If you never get sore, but your strength is going up, mm -hmm. you are doing beautifully. Now, it's very normal to overreach sometimes because you're excited about that workout or you had a pre-workout or you overreach a little bit or you felt strong that day, so you did a little, <clears throat> a little much, so you feel a little sore the next day. So, yeah, you overreached a little bit, not the end of the world. But uh, chasing the feeling of soreness as an indicator of your programming is doing well is, is, is a terrible indicator of that. Now, soreness is a better indicator to tell you that you might have done too much. Um, if you're really sore, if it lasts longer than a day or two, you probably went too hard or did too much um, for whatever the context of that day was. Otherwise, it's a terrible indicator of progress. The best indicator of progress is progress, right? Mm -hmm. So stronger, building muscle. Am I progressing? Yes, your, your progress is showing that. As far as tearing muscles down is concerned, ad adaptation is the process by which your body builds muscle and gets you stronger. Healing is just healing the damage that was caused, right? Yeah. So so you can heal and never adapt. In fact, a lot of people do this when they work out. They have such terrible programming or maybe they, they over-apply intensity and they get sore, then the soreness goes away and they go back to the gym and repeat again mm -hmm. and yet they don't ever progress. And it, what they're doing is they're, they're just, just breaking, surviving. They're just breaking down and healing. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing. I, I feel like this is such a common uh, struggle for athletes and, and for people that are like – really like putting a lot of mental discipline into their workouts in terms of like overcoming all the stress and like you know if, if i could push through uh, that means i'm progressing and so to to not have an indicator of of soreness feels like well that's pathetic you know that's that's mm. something that was below, beneath my abilities and so i should always be pressing my body to its limits uh but you just don't reap the benefits that you could if you were just more intelligent about the way you approach it and it is tough it's it's tough to kind of reframe that uh, in your mind was something I struggled with, you know, initially because it was just like all or nothing, all or nothing was, was just pounded into my head. So it's just, you just got to kind of check that, uh, you know, mentally uh, and, and try it, try it, like let, like trust the process, like go through that. You, you will find how much stronger you get and, and it's going to happen more rapidly. If you're adding sets, adding reps or adding weight to the bar over time, following a program and never get sore you are crushing. Like that is the perfect yep. place to be. The reality is though, you're not always going to be adding weight or adding sets or, and, and adding reps. And sometimes you're going to get a little sore, but if you're not getting sore, but you are, you have the ability to do another set than what you did the previous week or uh, five more pounds on the bar than you did the previous week, you are progressing and you are doing it perfectly. If you are able to do that without feeling really sore. So that's, that's where I'm. I'm always seeking for that, and the reality is, I don't. I, you know, I overreach a lot, and 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 end up going like, ah, shit, I didn't need to do that much. Um, but you, if you can actually continue to see weight increase, sets increase, or reps, any of those, all those are are forms of progressively overloading the body. If you're able to do any of those or all of those over the course of weeks or months you are progressing incredibly. And if you're able to do that and never get sore, you're a champion. Next question is from just a girl and her Jeep. Hey, <laughs> like any it. tips specifically for female ectomorphs? I listened to you talk about how difficult it is for women to gain a sculpted physique. I'm just discouraged. Uh, this is my favorite. One of my favorite categories of people to train are women who are ectomorphs, who actually come to me, and I've only had, I haven't had a ton of these, but the ones I've had, I've had great success with. They actually come to me and say, I want, I need help gaining weight. It's a lot of fun. Well, it's a lot of fun because it's very closely related to our own struggles, it, right? Well, and, and not just, not <laughs> yeah. just that, but, w but women, there is very little information in marketing that targets women that want to gain. You don't see that a lot. You just don't. And so they come to me and they're like, I don't know what to do. Not only that, but because women have been hammered more than men, mm -hmm. uh, with don't overeat that. Oftentimes, the ectomorph aspect of it is because they're afraid to actually push right. the calories. Yep. So when I get a female client that wants to gain, um, it's really not that different from when I get a male client that wants to gain. I'm going to train you for strength. Typically, it's a two or three day a week full body routine. 
more like a MAPS anabolic type of program. In fact, that would be the perfect program uh, for someone like this. Then I would have them eat uh, a high protein diet. We're looking at anywhere between you know, 0.6 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. Um, I'm looking at and figuring out their their maintenance calories, and I'm having them eat about three to 400 calories over that, um, and then let's rock and roll and have a lot of fun. The other reason why I love this is because the results that they get are phenomenal. Yeah. When women start to build muscle, especially if they're ectomorphs, they just start to gain curves. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Their butt starts to develop. Their hamstrings start to develop. They get better posture. They start to feel stronger, which is a very empowering feeling for a woman. I'll never forget uh, years ago, I trained this, uh, Jennifer was her name. She was an ectomorph, and she actually came to me with uh, this particular goal. And I'll never forget, about four months into the training, she you know, comes. She went on a vacation, right? She comes back to work out with me, and she goes, the coolest thing happened to me. She goes, I've never been able to take my heavy suitcase and put it in the overhead compartment uh, on the plane. Usually I have to ask my husband or someone for help. She's like, I was able to do mine. I was able to do my kids and my husband's. She goes, it's really crazy how how strong and amazing I feel. So one of my favorite categories, and you can definitely gain weight and build muscle, just follow the same Con- principles that we talk about. There's a men. little bit of a, a psychological hurdle for this this uh, you know client in particular. Mm-hmm. Not always, but sometimes where they're they're fearful of the the calorie side because of adding inches. You know they're mm-hmm. used to their clothes fitting a certain way, and they want to build muscle, but they don't want to put any body fat on. And you know if you increase calories, which means you're probably going to increase carbs, which means you're probably going to increase sodium, which means you're going to end up holding more water and you're going to look fuller. There is this this instant fear. It's very similar to the same fear that we got as guys trying to build muscle of, oh, I'm just getting fat or the weight fluctuation freaking out when it's really just water coming in and out. So I normally have to speak to that, right? I have to let them know that like, listen, trust in me that I'm gonna be you're gonna be okay. We're not gonna all of a sudden overnight put 30 pounds on you. It's gonna be not it's gonna be very subtle, but because we're increasing calories and increasing carbohydrates. There's a very good chance your body's going to hold a little bit of water. You'll feel a little puffy. That's temporary right now. The goal is to build strength. We want to add weight to the bar and increase calories, and I'll show you that we're going to build muscle. To me, that's the hardest part is getting them to be okay with they might feel their shirt or their pants fill out or feel a little bit different while we're trying to do this, and don't get don't be fearful of that, oh, my God, I'm getting fat. Okay, we're in a calorie surplus. Your body's probably holding a little more water while we're doing this. We're going to build some muscle. I can always, and you're an ectomorph, peeling you back down is actually really easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've found that a lot in my experience with a client like this. It's just a constant conversation that needs to be had, not just between me and my client, but also, you know, internally in their own, uh, you, you know, scenarios. They need to talk their way through this and, and extract the sort of societal pressures or whatever pressures they're putting on themselves uh, to always be this like super lean, uh, uh, you know, body and, and, and be happy with that. But, but, you know, once they cross over and find that a well-fed body, what that feels like and what it actually starts to look like, there's so much freedom in that. And it's just like liberating for, for these clients to get to that point. My name is Jill Millard. I am from Oxford, Michigan. Yeah. Excellent. How long have you been listening to the show? Oh gosh, probably going on about two years now. Oh, awesome. Now, why? who is your least favorite host and why is it Justin? Okay. <laughs> why do you always open with that? I'm afraid you're going to ask me something like that. I'll let you answer that. Question. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so so what is your what is your question? My question is, um, I'm really trying to work on building the delts. And I have pretty large traps and always have. And they always seem to take over when I'm doing like a side lateral raise. And I feel them more there than I do in my actual delt. Okay. Now, what is your fitness uh, history? Are you following any particular program now, a MAPS program? Um, Right now, I'm doing split. I've done anabolic. I've done aesthetic. And I'm, I've done split twice. So right now, I'm doing split. Um, and that has side laterals in it. So when I do those, even like this in... I forget what one it was, but there's um, alternating mm-hmm. side laterals, and I, I just tend to feel it most in my traps. So I, I have a couple things that, that that could help. So one, uh, have you ever heard of the you know, the dumping the milk out as you as you come up? Have you ever heard someone give that cue before? I have. 
Yes. So, so yeah. So as you as you raise, you know, think of actually rotating. Like if if you were holding two gallons of milk in each hand, and you're you're pouring the milk out as you come in. That's one. That's one cue. The second cue I give to someone uh, with something like this is think more about flying out instead of up. Because uh, once you get up to where you are, you know, you're, you're, you're parallel to the floor, the traps will kick in to help stabilize or lift you up even higher. So instead of thinking lifting up, think of flying out. Uh, and then if I have somebody okay. that, yeah, so if I have somebody still is having a lot of trouble and the trap's kicking in, this is where I'll actually take like an incline bench and I'll get it like almost, not quite 90 degrees, but almost, and you'll almost lay on it as if you were going to do a, a rear fly, but it's more lateral and it'll just help keep the traps out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. one of my favorite ways to do it is I'll, I'll have people lay forward on a bench so that your chest is on the bench. And it's on a really, oh, really, okay. and it's a really high incline. And then what you do is you bring the dumbbells out and you and rather than bringing them straight out to your sides, bring them out to the sides and kind of to the front of your body. Now, how much weight are you using when you're doing these laterals, by the way? Well, I guess it depends. I mean, usually probably around 15 pounds, 12, 15 pounds. Oh, yeah. That's wait. Okay, so let's cut that down, way down. I would go five to eight, okay. go five to eight pounds, go really, really slow. Okay. And the goal is to not shrug the shoulders or bring the scapula back. You're just using the delts, go real slow. Once you really start to feel that connection, once you start to get that pump in the side delts, you feel real comfortable with the form and the technique, then you can slowly move up in weight. But this is one of those exercises where um, weight isn't that important. It's all mm -hmm. about feel. It's all not technique. a technique. It's all technique. This is a right, total okay. technique exercise. Okay. Awesome. Were you an athlete in the past or something? Why do you have big traps? I was a cheerleader, actually. Oh. And I was a base. Oh, so you were I spent a base. A lot of time there you go. Yeah, I spent a lot of time lifting. Um, I don't know. That's the only thing I can, I had them in high school and I still have them. So I, that's the only thing I can attribute it to. Cause I did mainly cheerleading is what I did. So. Okay. Do you not like traps? I don't, I, I don't mind them. I like them, they, <laughs> she's like, I just don't want more over. of them. Yeah, she's like, I just don't need more of them. That's what she's worried about here. Yeah, well, this yeah. is, all, you know, real talk though. This is also an example of, you know, so we, since the beginning of the, the podcast, we tell people that the, the programs are, you know, they're, they're also moldable, right? So if there's exercises that I have a client going through and that they just seem to, their traps just build constantly. And that's not what we're trying to do. I'll eliminate it and exchange it for something else. Like, let's say you're, you're, you're quite happy with your delts and you feel like every time you do lateral raises, no matter how you do them, no matter mm -hmm. what tips you hear, you keep building your traps up. I'll exchange it with something else. So I'll, I'll put more focus on the rear delt or the front or do things that I think that are not going to build your traps up. So this is where I always encourage somebody that, you know, use the, the programs as a, as a blueprint and a foundation for you, but there, this is where I would encourage someone to mold it to what, what best suits them. Now, how does it feel when you use okay. rub, rubber bands, for instance? Like, have you tried priming ahead of time and like getting uh, some connectivity there with your delts with a rubber band? No, I have not tried that. Yeah, I, I found sometimes that that just helps in, in, just to connect to it uh, pre workout. So, you know, just some techniques like that and, and some mobility drills just to kind of wake everything up uh, so you can get that to respond a little bit more in yeah. the workout. Well, no, that's actually so you just reminded me of another strategy that, you know, I hadn't thought about this. I haven't done something like this with somebody in a long time. So take a, a really light band, like the lightest band you can get. Uh, and step on it and do the lateral holding like so i'll get five yeah, like pounds symmetric hold five pound dumbbells but i'll also hold the band and fly out with that mm. uh the band will get so the resistance of the band will keep her from probably coming up too high and letting the traps kick yeah. in and adding a little bit more resistance by adding the five yeah. pounds but really your question has to do with uh mind to muscle connection so something that helps right. with that is to understand the function of the muscles that you're trying to avoid working, right? So if it's your traps that are overactive, if we look at the action of the trapezius muscles, the traps shrug the shoulders up and they also bring the shoulder blades back, right? So when you're doing your lateral, you want to push your shoulder blades down and mm -hmm. prevent them from squeezing back. So they're just down. Yeah. So while they stay down, 
push them down, then just lift the arms. That's why you got to go real light and real okay. down. Well, yeah. this is also why the the incline bench reverse is so great is because down and forward is the opposite. Exactly. So de- it, it's gravity is going to help that, right? So if you do the the incline bench advice that we gave first where you're facing the opposite direction on the incline bench, gravity is going to pull the shoulders forward and down, which is exactly to Sal's yep. point and why that why that and, works so well. And when it comes to feel, exercises like laterals, uh, lighter is perfectly fine sometimes, and often it's better. So if you still can't feel it, go even lighter, slow down, and your goal when you're doing every single rep is to concentrate and try to feel it exactly where you want to feel it. That's the value of this particular exercise. Okay. That makes sense. Awesome. awesome. All, right. All right. Thank you. I heard some kids in the background earlier. You got, do you have children? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have three kids, and I just tested positive for COVID this week. So. Oh, <laughs> no. You sound okay. Are you doing all right? <laughs> yeah, just like a mild head cold. Yeah. Mm. Oh, shit. Can we get COVID through the mic? But I can't. Yeah. Um, today started the no taste, no smell anything. Uh, so. Oh, man. Oh, well. Well, now you got, uh, you know, some antibodies, right? Yeah. So yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I might go donate some plasma. Uh, there you go. Well, well hey, th- thanks for coming on the show. Good luck with the recovery on COVID, huh? Yes. Yep. Good luck. Thanks, guys. It's been great. Thank you. All right, thanks. And with that, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. So come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. I promise we're even more handsome than we sound. Hmm. Go to Instagram at Mind Pump Justin for Justin, at Mind Pump Sal for me, at Mind Pump Adam for Adam. And we're also on Parlor under the same names. Come find us. Come say hello. Now, this doesn't mean that your body won't look different, by the way. The right. scale might say the same thing, but you're going to start to look different because muscle is much more dense than, than fat, right? So let's say hypothetically you lost five pounds of body fat and gained five pounds of muscle. You will still have lost inches. Uh, body fat uh, takes up much more space. It's not 